Solving Global Hunger, One Community Weekly Progress Update, number 319. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution-creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. This is our weekly progress update number 319, May 5th, 2019 edition. And if you're not familiar with it, One Community's mission is to bring together people with a consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and to build sustainable and self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a pathway to global sustainability. And the way that we're making them self-replicating is by demonstrating this easy enough, affordable enough, and attractive enough so that they'll spread on their own. And so today what I want to talk about is how that is a foundation of addressing the world's challenges, one is specifically solving global hunger. And we talk a lot on these, I talk a lot in these updates about how one community's model is open source and free shared and designed to be flexible enough to adapt, to address the greatest challenges of this generation and generations to come. And solving global hunger is one of those. Uh, and most people don't realize right now, 2 billion people are estimated to be nutrient, uh, nutrient deficient. There are 800 million hungry people today, right now. 10,000 children die daily because of lack of sufficient food and nutritional deficiencies and related illnesses. Starvation. 10,000 children a day. 66 million primary school age children are attending classes hungry right now. Those statistics are crazy. And so, and the craziest thing, if you want to see references for all those statistics, uh, visit a written blog. They're in there, the first paragraph. And the crazy thing about it is, is there's enough food to feed all the people on the planet right now. So where's the breakdown? How is it that we're capable of solving global hunger because we have enough food, but we're not? And so one community's approach to this is to, well, let's talk about it. Why is it that we're not solving it? If there's already enough food, clearly it's not affordable enough, or it's not affordable, it's not profitable enough to deliver that food to where it's needed most, or it's not convenient enough to deliver that food to where it's needed most. And so one community's approach to this is rather than a handout, let's use the internet, let's use the power of permaculture, let's use the power of, of guerrilla gardening and teaching people what they need to restore our deserts to growing environments, to restore our wastelands. Right now we have areas that have just been destroyed through traditional agriculture that through permaculture could be rejuvenated and grow healthy, locally grown, organic, healthy, amazing food for people. And so the one community model, everything that you see happening in the background of this video is designed to teach people what they need to provide the tools, the tutorials, the resources, and the do-it-yourself instructions for replicating everything that you see happening here in the background. Include the housing, the food, the energy, as well as open source education programs, uh, global stewardship program, where co cooperation and collaboration between different communities working together to add to the open source sustainability suite of tools and resources and do-it-yourself instructions, and to build teacher demonstration hubs that can teach people how to replicate them too, with one community being the first. And the way that this solves global hunger or addresses solving global hunger is by setting up sustainable villages that can provide everything that they need to be self-sufficient and that also flourish most, like one community is designed to do, when they share what it is that we're doing. When we share what it is that we're doing, we invite people to come to one community, to visit one community, experience it, to stay in a cob home or an earth bag home or a shipping container home. And if they like it, to be able to take what it is that they've learned, to eat foods that they may have never eaten before, heirloom foods, nutritious, high quality foods that have a history no genetically modified food here, no fertilizer here, no artificial fertilizer here, lots of great compost though, healthy, nutritious food, locally grown, prepared, on site, so people can taste the difference, so people can see what's involved and how much labor is involved and how much time and energy is involved and how much free time they have outside of it because they're working and living cooperatively and collaboratively instead of competitively. This is what one community is doing and through doing that, by creating that open source free shared model and making it Demonstrating it's easy enough, affordable enough, and attractive enough. It's designed to spread on its own because it'll be easier to build in other countries. Cheaper. 
cheaper to buy land, cheaper to buy materials in a lot of cases, cheaper to find labor, those kinds of things. And giving people everything they need so that they can go live in places that need it most and help if they want to, or just build sustainably for themselves, but in so doing, eliminate their carbon footprint and become a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem. Applying permaculture globally, bringing those resources, that knowledge, and feeding it back into a global online network of information so that people can access it anywhere in the world, showing what's possible and inviting everybody to participate in whatever way works best for them. Everything that we're designing is designed to be implemented as either the complete model or as individual components. So if somebody's just growing some new vegetable or fruit, that's a step in the right direction. If they're just building themselves a cob home or an earth bag home or a compressed earth block home or shipping container home, that's a step in the right direction. But for people that want to build complete teacher demonstration hubs and really go places instead of handing people food, instead of giving somebody a fish, teaching them how to fish, and in this case, teaching them how to fish means teaching them how to build their own homes, grow their own food, uh, establish their own energy infrastructure, and to live holistically and sustainably, that's what we're creating. And we want to work in cooperation and collaboration with other people that are interested in that too. So we're an all-volunteer organization. I'm not paid for what I'm doing. We've had almost 400 volunteers uh, volunteer with our team at this point, none of which were paid. We're a nonprofit organization. We're creating this stuff. We're open sourcing and free sharing this stuff because we see a world that is sustainable within our lifetime, a sustainable civilization, a world that truly works for everybody and solving global hunger, not just putting a Band-Aid on the problem, but solving the roots of the problem and creating a planet that flourishes and is vibrant and takes care of our environment, and in so doing, has the environment such that it can take care of them as well. And so our models are designed to teach how to do that and to demonstrate how to do that. So with that said, here's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of solving global hunger through all the different things that we're doing. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued building the most sustainable faucets and accessories page. This week, we worked on the accessories section. We created all the imagery, did additional research and added a resources section and completed two of the details for our number one and number three recommended choices. You can see this work in progress here. Dan Alec, designer and illustrator, completed his 44th week helping with Earthbag Village renders. This week he finished work on this view of the Earthbag Village looking northwest and a closer up view looking in the same direction. Changes made include rendered plant, texture, and people fixes and additions. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 157 from Dean. This week, he fixed the recycled bottled windows over the door, custom built the light that is over them, and worked on the placement of the four domes. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 49th week leading the development of the Murphy Bed instructions. This week's focus was redesigning the way the back storage and changing area will be assembled and then integrating the new changes into the complete assembly instructions for this area. You can see some of this work here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, James Harrigal, student researcher, completed his 19th week researching sustainable materials for the most sustainable adhesives page. This week's focus was researching and adding specific products to the 3M product section, as shown here. Amvita Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, continued helping with the duplicate city center costs. This week, she fixed all the imagery on kitchen spreadsheet and updated all the paint and stain details so they match the separate research done by James to identify the most sustainable options available for these. You can see some of this work here. Tanya Griffin, Aubrianne Boyle, and Allie Marsh, interior designers from Lotus Design Pros, completed their 19th week helping with the duplicate city center interior design details. This week's focus was finishing the kitchen storyboards and initial research and development of the first bedroom storyboards. Sneha Dongre, structural engineer, also continued with her 12th week helping with the duplicate city center structural details. 
This week's focus was problem solving a way to import the floors from AutoCAD into SAP 2000. You can see some of this work here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team created version one of the complete open source library food program, tasks, subtasks, and work packages. This outlines everything needed to build and replicate the One Community Highest Good Food component. One Community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete. Summaries and integration of all the best known alternative education programs, including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more. And leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team continued working on the structural redesign of the Ultimate Classroom. This week, we redesigned and expanded the bathrooms and cubby storage spaces added sliding glass door entry for the south side, and started testing the straw bale walls and windows. You can see some of this work in progress here. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team working with Brian Gilb, project management professional, continued with our fourth week of updating our business plan and project management strategy. This week's focus was rewriting the behind the scenes content for the open source library program charter and project charters and beginning the process of task, subtask, and work package outlining for the complete food component of the open source library. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. Emilio Nahara, digital marketer, also continued with his 29th week as part of the marketing team. This week's focus was creating the ad group campaigns for the pages covering food forest creation, hoop houses, botanical garden, soil amendment, apiary, goats, rabbits, chickens, aquaculture, wildlife stewardship, and aquapinis and wallapinis. You can see some of this work here. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of solving global hunger and so much more than that. If you'd like to receive an email, every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com. If you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all of our open source content, you can visit our written blog, you can visit our website. There's so much information there. We've been at this for nine years and uh, we are just continuing on. So check it out, see what it is that we're up to. And of course, if you'd like to help out, visit our helping page. There's lots of different ways to help out. Uh, the easiest of which, of course, is sharing our, helping us share our information on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's a great way to help us out. You know, just follow us and see what's up. Ring that bell so you get the weekly updates and so you can tune in when you're interested. And uh, and we're on all the social media networks to make it as easy as possible. Also, we're on LinkedIn, Tumblr, Reddit, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We're on all the different social media networks, about 15 others as well. So you can share information uh, wherever you like and access our information wherever you prefer. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching till the end. If you're somebody who's donated to our project, we're all unpaid volunteers, so 100% of your donation goes towards forwarding our open source mission and helping us create more open source content. It does not go to paychecks for me or anybody else. Uh, so we appreciate that. If you're somebody who's commented in our videos or said, hey, great job or anything like that, or sent us feedback, all that helps as well. It's all a step in the right direction. So thanks for following our progress. Thanks for watching what we're up to, and until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks.